Hello everyone, welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Uh, this is episode number eight of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. Now we're starting out in Photoshop, then we're going to jump into Topaz Adjust AI. We're going to do some interesting things in there, some, some unusual things in there that I normally don't do to images. And then I'm going to jump into Topaz Studio 2. We're going to add painterly effects, textures, all kind of different things. So it's going to be fun. We're starting out with this, and we're going to end up with an image looking like this. You're going to learn a lot of different things today, so you're not going to want to miss anything. So without any further ado, let's get started. But before we get started, I forgot to tell you, I'm linking this image in the description below. So you can download it and follow along with me. It's a great way of learning. So now let's get started. Okay, step number one, I went ahead and duplicated the background layer, named it Topaz Adjust AI. So what I want to do is take it into Adjust AI and just kind of uh, work on it a little bit to suit the mood of the painting I want to make today. So I'm, doing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch uh, Adjust AI. I'm going to start out by clicking standard and yeah that looks gives it a little bit more punch but here's the thing i want to do i want to prepare this for the painterly look so what i want to do is really open up the shadows you know right in here and i'm going to pull back on the highlights to just tone those highlights down a bit yeah right around 0.69 somewhere around in there and i also want to ease off on that saturation a little bit because I'm going for a sort of a moody look to this image here. And I think right around there looks pretty good, like around a 31. See, already it's taking on a little more of a different look. Let me uh, show you the original. Here's the original. Okay. And here's after uh, Adjust AI. And I think that's looking pretty good. I just might want to play with the detail. Let's uh, take the small detail and cut it back a little bit. I, actually, I'm going to take some detail away, probably right around here somewhere. I'm going to take some uh, medium detail away. Just, just stick with me on this. I'm usually, I'm doing the opposite of what I normally do in here, but I'm thinking painterly here. So I'm trying to give it a more simplified look by pulling back on the detail. And even the large detail, I'm going to pull it back. Because if you recall, when you're doing like painterly type images, painterly images aren't really, you know, got tons of detail in them other than the paint strokes and things like that. So I want to, you know, pull some detail away. A lot of times I'll use like Simplify in um, Topaz Studio 2 to do this, but I don't want to go quite that simplified. So a little more subtle Simplify approach. So I'm using the uh, detail to get me there. So let me show you. Here's the original. Okay, and here it is here. So I'm liking that. I'm going to go ahead and apply it. All right, we're back in Photoshop. So uh, let's take a look at the before. Here's the before and here's the after. I think you'll agree with me that this is definitely a much more simplified approach with some extra punch to it. I went ahead and duplicated this uh, Adjust AI layer and renamed it Topaz Studio 2 because now I'm going to launch Topaz Studio 2. And here we are inside of Topaz Studio 2, which I always like to refer as my creative toolbox because it really helps me create. All I did here was I came up to Add Filter and I added a Texture Filter. Let me turn it on for you. All I did in this texture filter was I found a texture that I like called Ancient Paper, put it in the darkened blend mode, and pulled its opacity back to 0.46. And you can see what it's doing on there. And now the only other thing I want to do is use a layer mask. And let's go ahead and click this layer mask icon. Let's get a nice big brush here. And the radius, I'm going to take it up full way here. I'm going to shut the edge wear off because I want nice soft edges here. Now take a look at my brush. You see the red circle in the center? That will get the full effect. And you see the green circle? Between the red and green circle is a transition point. So I want this area between the uh, horizon and the foreground to kind of blend together. So I moved my transparency up to like a 0.33. And that will take a good bit of that texture off the foreground but it'll leave some on there just to marry this image together to marry that texture to both parts of the image and you'll see what i mean here in a second so let me go ahead and paint right across here i got that nice feathered edge on there i'm going to go ahead and paint this whole foreground with the same gray paint and see how it just all is married together now i'm going to make my radius smaller and i'm just going to paint over the roof of that cabin just to blend this, uh, you know, I don't want that extra texture on the cabin because the cabin roof is up over the horizon line there, okay? 
So I'm just going to paint that off. It doesn't have to be perfect. It is a texture and it'll look just fine. You don't have to be super uh, accurate here. But just like that. I went ahead and added an impression filter. Um, I chose this brush type 16. I like the look. And if you click through these different brushes, you'll see what they do. But I just clicked through till I found one that I liked. And when you get a brush like this, you might say, that looks horrible or this one looks horrible. But after you adjust it, believe me, it won't look horrible. But this is where you really have to experiment. This is what this brush type 16 looks like by default. I changed this number of strokes to high. See, I can go to medium. See how it looks different when you go through the different settings. And depending what's what look you want, you may like this look here, more of an abstract look, but I wanted more of a finished look, so I chose high. And the other thing I want to do is I always like to come down here, not always, but more, more often than not, come down to texture, click this. You can see some of these little white flecks in here. If you come down after opening up texture and click on background type original, It'll let the original image show through like that. See the flex go away, the white flex. Kind of an important tip if you don't want those white flex going through. Sometimes you do want that and it really adds to the image when you let some of the canvas show through in the background. Now let's go ahead and make some adjustments, okay? Now brush size, if I move this to the right, you can see the way the brush is changing in size. Okay, so you can adjust this to however you like it. And in my case, I think I want this to be right around a 0.40 for the vision I'm having on this uh, image today, this painting. Paint volume, I'm not gonna touch this one, but paint opacity, this is a cool one. This will let the paint strokes really start to show through when you pull that up. Okay, so play with these, but I'm gonna take mine up to around, a, you know, like around a 0.70, somewhere around in there. And, um, and then you have a couple other sliders. Here. Let me pull this uh, down a little bit so we can see. These are really cool sliders, stroke rotation and um, stroke rotation variation. So let me pull up uh, stroke rotation and see. It changes the direction of the strokes, as you can see right there. So I'm not really going to do anything with that one, but the one I am going to use is the um, stroke rotation variation, this one right here. And it vary, you know, varies the strokes, so it gives you a more... Um, a more randomized and say a varied look to your different paint strokes. There's also one called color uh, variation. If you pull this one up, it starts to do some color into the image there. You can pull it way up and you'll see a lot of color in here. On this particular image, I'm not gonna use that. And a lot of times I'll play with all these sliders here like stroke width and stroke length. But in this case, I don't want anything there. Now I'm gonna pop down into lighting. You also have color, you have lighting. I'm not going to do anything with color because I like the color so far. I'm going to come into lighting here and the only thing I'm going to do in here is it's getting a little soft, losing it. There's a little lower contrast in here. So what I think I'll do is pull up the contrast a decent amount here. Not that much, Dave. Let's see, contrast. Let's go just a little bit here and I want to pull back my highlights so they're not getting too too hot. I don't want to go back too far. Maybe somewhere right around there. I think that looks pretty good. And that's pretty much it for the uh, impression filter. So let's uh, click on the eyeball here. Here's the before the impression and here's after. But you see how some of that paint, you know, that texture took on some painterly quality up in here. And that's really the reason why I added it. I went ahead and added another uh, filter right here. And if you come up here to add filter and you click this, you know, you can come here and pick any one of these filters. I added a texture filter right here. So let's go ahead and uh, turn it on and see. And let's open it up by clicking on texture here. And this is a uh, texture I use called Cotton Candy. Isn't that a cool name? Cotton Candy. Now what I want to do is, oh and by the way, if there's a texture that you know that you want to use, you can come up here to this little search icon right here. Click that and type in the name of your texture and it'll come right up for you. So that's pretty cool. I wanted to change the blend mode on this because this doesn't look good right now, right? And I put my opacity to 0.54, so I pulled it back. So if I take it the whole way up, you'll see there's that texture right there. But I took it back to um, 0.55, which is right here. Okay, now blend modes are so important with textures. Now right now it's on normal, but watch when I go to, there's two particular blend modes I like here. When you hover over these blend modes, they'll automatically change for you. You can see how they're going to work, which is nice. 
Here's darken, which looks pretty nice. And here's multiply, it's a little darker. So depending on what you want. And you could try any of these blend modes, like overlay is a good blend mode, soft light, screen for certain type of images. It depends, you gotta try them. But I'm gonna use uh, multiply here. Then what I did was, I came down and I thought, well, I like it, but it's a little too dark, so I lightened it up a little bit. I took the brightness and I brightened it up to right around 20 to 25 range. Let's try 23, I think that looks good. Now the detail, let's zoom into that. Can you see that really nice texture it's putting on there? Kind of has that painterly canvas type quality to it, which I like. So there we go, there's um, what that looks like. But what I did was I eased off on that texture a little bit. Let me zoom in again a little bit. And I took the detail, and as I move the detail to the left, can you see that gets a little less and less? So you can just adjust it and tweak it just the way you like it. And and I ended up like right around, you know, right around a 21, somewhere in that area. I think that looks good. And then the other thing I did was I didn't like the color that this texture, because you can see it has that like pink and greens and so on in here. And I don't like that in my texture. So I just took the saturation and pulled it off. This is what I really love about... Um, Topaz Studio 2 with their texture filter. You can make so many changes and alterations to it. It's really cool. And that's all I did with that filter. The next filter I added was a precision detail filter right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it on so you can see it here and open it up. What I wanted to do was just add a little bit of detail to the cabin just to draw my viewer to look at the cabin, okay? And we can use things like detail, contrast, and things like that to get our viewers to look at a certain part of our images, okay? And I'm using uh, precision detail for this. And the, what I did here was, I just went to the shadow detail. I just wanted to bring some detail out in the shadows. I took the small shadow detail up a little bit, uh, a very slight amount in the medium detail, and a slight amount in the large. Now, let me show you the before and after. Let me zoom in a little bit and just look at the cabin. Okay, so here is the before. See that little detail pop in there? And um, let me zoom back out. Now what I want to do is just uh, apply that to the cabin. So I'm going to use a layer mask. So I'm going to click on its layer mask. Let's hide the adjustment by inverting the layer mask. So see the three little dots here? Click on that and click on invert. That makes it a black hide all layer mask. Then we're going to get a brush tool and turn our transparency the whole way, slide the slider the whole way to the right till the swatch here turns white. And you have different increments in between here that you could use as well, but I wanna use it at full strength. I have my edge aware on and we'll adjust our radius here. And all I wanna do is paint it on the cabin, okay? Again, just let that cabin pop through a little bit. And again, that will draw the interest of the viewer into the cabin. They won't really understand why they're going into the cabin, but that extra detail will will cause them to look at it. Believe it or not, it really works. It's an amazing little technique right there. And there's just that little extra detail. Now let me click the, let's zoom in a little bit. Let me click the eyeball here. Here's the before and here's the after. So see that? It just draws you right into that cabin. Next, I added a basic adjustment. Let me turn it on. And all I did here was, and I'll show you here, um, I took the shadows and opened up the shadows because this cabin right in here, I thought it was getting a little dark. Let me shut that off and just look right in this section of the cabin right here. Let me shut that off. See, it's a little dark in there. And it doesn't look bad, but I thought, I want to open that shadow up a little bit. So I went ahead and, again, just added like 0.36 on the shadows. Uh, open those shadows up a little bit. I'm going to come up and go to the layer mask. Let's invert it. Turn it black so it hides it everywhere. Get a brush. Again, take that transparency slider the whole way up to the right and make sure my brush is at a decent size. And I'm just going to paint on this shadow area on the front of the cabin right here. Right like so. And it just lightens it up. But these are the little details that you add as you're crafting your image and making it into the piece of art that you are going to be proud of. As I continue to study the image, I feel it needs another texture just to kind of pull everything together and make it more cohesive, if that's a good term. Uh, so I added another texture filter, and uh, let's go ahead and turn it on and open it up. I just went into the search bar here and typed the name of the texture. I knew the texture I wanted. It, it was called Auto Medley, and there it is, okay? Now, I needed to change the blend mode because I didn't like it the way it looked right there. So I went down to soft light and I thought, oh, that's looking pretty cool. It's a little bit too strong, so I'm just going to bump 
ease off in that opacity. You know, it's somewhere right around a 32, 33. And I like that little extra color in there. If I didn't, I could come down here to saturation and pull that off or add more color, whatever I want, but I'm happy with it. And if it was too much detail, I could pull the detail back or add more detail by moving it to the right. See, watch, I'll move it to the right. And you can see, see what I'm saying? I can add more detail or I can move it to the left and add less detail. But I liked it right where it was in the center. So I just double click detail and I get it back. Now, I don't like, I love it in the sky here, but I don't like it as much on the foreground. I want some of it on there. So look, I can steal this mask from the first texture. I can right click on this mask and copy the mask. Come up to this layer mask up here, right click and say, paste the mask. And just like that, it removes some of it off the foreground. So that's pretty cool, right? And if we felt we were still too strong, we could come back to the opacity and ease that back a little bit more. But I think right around that 30, maybe I'll just take it back. It was at 33, I think. I'll take it to a 31, and I'm happy with that. That's looking really nice. We're almost finished. I wanted to add one last filter here in Topaz Studio 2 to kind of frame this image in, and that was an edge exposure filter. This is a really great filter here. Let me turn it on, and watch the edges when I turn it on here. See how it just darkens them in a little bit? Let me open this up. It's a simple filter to use. It has left, left edge, top edge, uh, bottom edge, right edge, and then you just adjust the exposure. You can make it light to the left, dark to the right. You can adjust the um, size of how wide it is or narrow or how much transition it has, the feathering action. You can even add color to it if you want to, which is really cool. But it's super simple and easy to use there, okay? And I just took its opacity and pulled it back. And let me do the before. Here's the before and here's the after. And that is all there was to that. If we're happy with everything, all we need to do now is come up here to the menu bar and click accept. And we're going right back into Photoshop. And here we are. There's just one final thing in here and we will be done. Pay careful attention to this last adjustment in Photoshop. I'm coming down to the adjustment layers and I'm getting a levels adjustment here. Look at my histogram. You'll notice I don't have too much information up in the highlight area here. And the image looks a little dull actually right now. But check this out. I'm going to fix all that. Take a look at this levels adjustment. See these uh, three um, points right here? This is the highlights. This is the midtones. And this is the shadows. And you can take these sliders and you can slide them, okay? So what I need to do is... I need to take this highlights and move it to the edge of this uh, histogram right here. And it's going to remap my white tones. In other words, my highlights are going to be right here now. And see how my histogram bumped over? Now, I think it looks a lot lighter and I like the way it looks, but I wish it had a little more contrast. So I'm going to take this midtones slider and bump it to the right a little bit and see how it darkens those midtones up a little bit and gives me a little bit of a punchy, contrasty look right there. And I like that. I think that looks really nice. Let's click on this uh, Levels eyeball here. So here's the before and here's the after. But look how that really just brought this image to life. Just a simple little Levels adjustment. It's a powerful tool. Here's our little shack painting. I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. It's a quaint little old shack, little painting. We use some uh, textures. We utilize textures and added painterly effects to them which gave us this painterly look up in here which is really nice and i'm really happy with this one i hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh don't forget in the description below there is a link for this image you can download it and uh follow along with me it's a great way of learning hey if you enjoyed this tutorial today please give it a like and also share it with your friends if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe and click that bell notification icon and then every time i upload a new tutorial you'll be notified about it Hey, thanks each and every one of you for joining me today in the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.